Hello friends and welcome back. Today I will be discussing the psychology of religion too. Remember I am on Twitter and now I am also on Discord. I will leave the links in the description as well as my source material for this episode. So let's get started. Religion necessarily violates the rules that guide our ordinary cognitions. As a result, religious beliefs and experiences can be neither proven nor disproven through empirical means. People only find affirmation through their religious communities. This, of course, does not mean that if you adhere to a religion that you are not scientific. There is a difference between religious beliefs being scientific and a religious person being scientific. When these principles are violated by religion, our minds construct counterintuitions for special counterfactual worlds including the supernatural. The ritual sensory display and coordination of movement, sound, smell, touch, and sight harmonizes believers' minds and bodies into expressions of public sentiment. Rituals invariably contain acts of submission and hierarchy, much like higher social animals. Examples are genuflection and prostration. Even kings and priests must participate in these displays. Generally, these rituals incorporate repeatedly, usually reversible emotional states of unity. With coordinated bodily rhythms and submissive displays, Individuals signal to others in the group that they identify with and give themselves over to the existential desires of others. This demonstrates to others in the group the willingness of the individual to self-sacrifice with no specific recipient in mind. With regard to religion, emotional thinking incorporates individual thought, as well as social processes, transmit and maintain religious attitudes. According to Thagard, emotional cognition means an emphasis on interaction between cognitive processes and emotions, since he holds that all thinking is emotional to an extent. Historically, it's believed that emotions are irrational and that sparked division between emotional thought and cognition. However, in recent years, this belief has been challenged. Our emotions play a huge role in which actions we choose, and studies have shown an integration between the emotional and higher thought areas of our brains. Thagard has developed a theory of emotional coherence which concludes that actions and beliefs are not only influenced by evidence but also by the emotional values we assign to them. This theory states that people adopt and maintain religious faith because they fit with the person's beliefs and goals. The major predictor of a child's faith is that of his or her parents. When a parent tells a child that God exists, the child is likely to trust the parent, and when the child attends social institutions where authority figures reinforce these beliefs, it will be their main source of beliefs. 
How do people transmit emotional values? One way is by explicit argumentation, such as Pascal's wager. Parables are an example of another way to transmit these values belonging to a larger class known as emotional analogy. However, the most powerful way to transmit values is called emotional contagion, in which a person tends to mimic another in facial expression, movement, vocalizations, thereby emotionally converging with that person. Indoctrination is more than just driving home principles. It also consists of passing on emotional values. This can be most clearly seen in the case of psychopaths. They know the difference between right and wrong. They just don't care about other people's feelings. Empathy and altruism are other mechanisms for the transmission of emotional values. At its very basic core, empathy and altruism are basically absorbing the emotional values of another. That's it for this segment. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments in the comment section. Let me know how I'm doing. If I need to slow down or speed up or make things easier to understand or if I'm talking down to you, I really don't know. So let me know. You can catch me on Twitter. I am now on Discord. I will be leaving the links in the description as well as the links to my sources. As always, stay curious and never be afraid. And I will we'll see you next time. Bye.